peace, family. Welcome to another episode. I'm here with the Blue Pill, man. I had to call Blue Pill. Blue Pill's out of town. Blue Pill is only right. You did the 44-year anniversary of hip-hop. Hip-hop always finds its way to the mainstream. Um, you know, we've had some milestones in hip-hop from Cardi B, uh, you know, to other things this year in hip-hop. Um, you know, hold with the 444. Uh, the latest, the BT Awards, Blue Pill. I want to get right into. Oh, before I get right into that, uh, let me just tell the people that I'm gonna put the flyer on the screen. Brother Panic will be in New York November 19th, so get your advance tickets. Call me for information. Uh, he will be in New York on November 19th. It will be a night, a day that you will not want to miss. You definitely don't want to miss. So, uh, contact the information on the flyer. And to find out more information. But back to what I'm Peace saying, Blue Pill. What, what you said? Peace, family. Peace to you and yours, brother Blue Pill, Port Alive and Direct. Yes, indeed. I'm it, hearing it, your monologue about the hip-hop milestones in this 44th year. And, um, you know, culminated with uh, uh, a broadcast, BT Hip Hop Awards, debuting from Miami for the first time you know, last, uh, the other night. And the feature of that particular presentation that made the news cycle, you know, what they picked up on is Eminem's four minute, four minute, four and a half minute monologue of what they're calling a freestyle, you know, going at Trump. Yes, yes. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's the most, Shared tweet of all time from uh, Eminem. I mean, every mainstream outlet from CNN to ABC to NBC to Fox is covering it. Um, it's on all the hip-hop blogs. Some people happy, some people upset. Um, YG, YG wants to know why nobody paid attention to his Donald Trump diss song a year ago. He's tight. Yes, fuck Trump. <laughs> and then it's, right. And, um, you know, to, to get some more background information, even on Nipsey and YG's song, you know, because Nipsey spoke about it recently. You know, they had a, they got a lot of backlash from radio, even though the song was heavily requested, especially in their market, you know. And what we're seeing is, you know, as Eminem said in his line, people are drawing lines in the sand based on demographics, based on endorsements, you know what I'm saying? So radio, if they are broadcasting in a particular uh, area that is deemed, you know, an uh, uh, area that either Trump won or is in democratic contention or things of that nature, they're making decisions on those lines, and they're also making them based on their advertisers. You know, they don't want to upset their sponsors, you know. So these songs are not getting preferential treatment, but a freestyle such as Eminem's um, that was done you know, on a predominantly melanated program such as the BT Hip Hop Awards, you know, I mean, I the fact that Luke got his first award in 35 years that didn't make the news, but Eminem shooting at Trump, you know, that made the cycles. And you know, let's be clear, this is not the first time that Eminem has shot at Trump. Right, right. You know, and you're a fan of hip hop, just like I am. Did you feel that it was an exceptional freestyle? Well, well, I think everybody agrees it was not an exceptional freestyle at this point. I think um, it was the venue, B Black Entertainment, you know, the BET Awards. I think it was the timing, everything that's going on right now, and yeah. um, just the energy that he came with. I mean, it was if if you could compare it to you know the 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 emo rap that we got right now, it was very emotionally driven. It was more emotionally driven than it was lyrically driven. Uh, yes, that's 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 a good way of explaining it. So and, uh, I, I, Eminem, yeah. yes, he wears his emotions on his sleeve. Um, so it, it was, you know, I I, I definitely. 
I definitely see why it would be a newsworthy item. After all, let's take ourselves out of this conversation, shall we? After mm-hmm. all, it's M and M, okay? Yeah. And by, like I said, by me making that statement, it might not re- reverberate with me and you or our media audience that way. But we're still talking about a global icon in regards to the way that people have um, not only matriculated towards his music and supported him, but some people have really been introduced to hip hop through him. You know what I'm saying? And 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 there's some circles that consider him the best rapper alive. Let's be clear. Right. I was you know. Bring that up. Yeah, I was gonna bring that. I, up. I I I don't I don't I don't um award him that dubious title, but that title is in contention, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, there are greats amongst us who have awarded him that title. Not just his fans, but his fans are inclusive of his peer group. Let's be clear. So uh, I want you to ask the question. (laughs) Well, 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 what do you think about it? Is it something that we should be happy about that, as you said, he drew a line in the sand? Is it something that we should celebrate? You know, this is uh, um, this is the top. This is one of the, like you said, 50 years from now, he's going to be known, if not the greatest, as one of the greatest in that mainstream circle. So is this going to help the cause, Blue Pill, I guess you could say? Does this help the cause um, or hurt it? Okay. You know, well, whitewash, you know, whitewash is what right. some people might say. Let's, 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 again, you know, and Eminem happens to be 44 years old this year. Uh, he has an album coming out, you know, so this is good publicity for him. You're talking about somebody who uh, is known as a controversial rapper. We don't have too many controversial rappers. We don't have too many rappers who are willing to, you know, to tote the line and say what needs to be said and put their own career on the line, their own reputation on the line. Eminem has crossed that line a long time ago, okay? Now, in regards to the move that he made, yes, I think that not only is it going to add on to the conversation, but I think that it was important, especially in hip-hop, for him to make a move like that because... You know, it's it's the silent elephant in the room. It's the 800-pound elephant. The fact that he represents a rustic, blue-collar, mainly uh, white demographic population. That's his fan base, you know, across the country. You know what I'm saying? Not only blue state, but red state. You know what I mean? A lot of our interface with people who we might see eye to eye, and the only thing we have in common is our like for hip-hop. He brings those people to the party. Now, there's a juxtaposition that's taking place at the same time because K-Rock, you know, who also hails from the same state as him, is an avid Trump supporter. You know what I'm saying? He's red meat. You know, he's throwing red meat to to, to the, you know, to the the, the ravaging red-based audience, the same, you know, audience that Trump feeds. So he has to make a distinction. This is not even all the way, all the way about us. This is about him and his audience, and the fact that you know he understands their proclivities a little better than we do. He understands that conversation more. He's privy to it more than we are. We don't know what's taking place, the murmurings and the conversation that's taking place behind the lines. He does. He's in Michigan. That's the militia state. You know what I'm saying? So it was very bold of him to make a a clear career move as that, to say, I'm drawing the line, because he could potentially get washed by a large percentage of his audience for that. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of them, they bump with Trump, and they no longer on, you know, they, they, you know as, as what Jay-Z said, um, what's that line he got from that old song? We, I'm showing my age. I'm getting old, right? Um, we off we, that, right? Well, well, um, okay. Just tell me a few lines, and I should be able to get it. I, no, I think that's the song. It's like we off that. Yeah, yeah. So, 
Europeans are off, you know, oh, you know, <laughs> we listen to Eminem, they got a black friend and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, their politics is a little bit more um, far-reaching than that at this particular. They've grown up from that, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, they're, they're riding, you know, they, they've made their decision, you know what I'm saying? And if the call goes out, they, they're going in. They're riding to the wheels fall off, you know? And he seems to know this, you know what I mean? So you have a very um, politically, uh, how can we call it? There's a word for it, you know. Um, Trump is very divisive. You know what I'm saying? He's he's driving a wedge in his country with these talking points and these overtures that he's making to white fragility in the form of what we call white supremacy or white racism. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's it's a responsibility of Eminem's as a uh, a elder classman of the statecraft called hip hop to make his distinction known to say. Look, I'm I'm riding with my homies on this. I'm siding with them. You know, it was very clear in the iconography of what we saw in that presentation at the freestyle. He did not forget his roots, where he came from. You know, even though he comes from a white womb and he comes from a white community and the other side of 8 Mile, these are still the people that he feels, look, I have a platform to be a voice for these people. I have a platform to be a voice for this culture. I've added on to, uh, you know, race relations in this country. You know, you ever been to an Eminem concert? No. I've been to one in Detroit. You feel me? Like, you know, these are venues where, you know what I'm saying, you get an opportunity, you know, because, like I said, Detroit, Michigan in particular, they'll bring the Europeans out from the mountains, the militia, you know what I'm saying, the hockey fans. An Eminem audience, you know what I'm saying, his fan base is comprised, you know, primarily of that. You know, he had G-Unit with him, so the hood came out. You know what I mean? The whole city came out. And you get to see people face-to-face. You know what I mean? You get to intermingle and interact with some of these people. And there are no other opportunities outside of that that you're going to get to see these people. You know what I mean? For what it's worth, for whatever it's worth, you make it worth what it is. You know what I mean? Everybody is not going to be able to appreciate a dynamic like that and make anything of it. But he has contributed to building those particular bridges. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, I thought it was very responsible for him to let us know where he stood on the matter, let his audience know where he stands on the matter, you know what I'm saying, and then give them some sort of ultimatum. Because it's no longer just about music. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, do do our artists get this? Because, I mean, the Twitter fingers is going off. You know, we, 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 we see it. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're standing up. They're becoming very proactive in regards to letting their position be known. They're clapping. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we need some music. We need some anthems. You know what I'm saying? We we, we need... Blue, you know what why, why, why do you think it seems as though, uh, like Eminem said, this is, like you said, and Eminem said it also, he, you know, this is not the first time he said something against Trump. And, you know, Eminem knows how to troll somebody. It seems as though Trump doesn't want to respond to Eminem. I've seen him even respond to Macklemore. I've seen him respond to Jamel Hill. I've seen him respond... To a lot of people, you wouldn't even think he was uh, um, um, Steph Curry. Why won't you think? Why? Why don't? Why you think Trump hasn't responded to Eminem at this point? If Eminem's freestyle is all over every station, and at right. that same time, we know Trump has a big ego. He can't resist himself. He has. A, he has a big ego, and it's exploded on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? So, so he's why no mindful response? of it. So why no response? Um, You know, uh, once again, we're also talking about two people that have a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Trump knows Eminem. Eminem knows Trump. You know, Trump, uh, you know, was featured in 
some promotional videos that Eminem had in 2004. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is this is a different level of WWF or WWE. You speaking to a younger audience, right? This is a different level of WWE at the end of the day. Um, you know, I don't think, for whatever reason, he might not think that it's advantageous for him to, to mud wrestle or to mud sling. You know what I mean? With, with Eminem at this particular time. You know what I mean? Don't think that it's not going to come up in, in one of them press conferences or what have you. But, you know, he woke up shooting at uh, uh, the North Korean dude today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> he, got, he has a lot of adversaries. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's, he's beefing with his own cabinet. You know what I'm saying? With, with Rex Tiller. Uh, you know. I might be chopping his name up, yeah, but yeah. Till, what Tillerson? Tiller? Yeah, I'm chopping his Tillerson, name up too. Yeah, yeah. And, you know he he going back and Rex. forth. Just call you him know Rex. But, yeah, like you know he got he got nuclear active countries on his head. So you know what I mean the M M&M and M situation. I don't know who his advisors are because at the end of the day, even in his press conference today that he had with the um, Canadian Prime Minister. He said, you know, it comes down to, to my strain of thought. My decisions is what matters most. You know what I'm saying? I can have advisors around me and all of that. But at the end of the day, y'all going to hear what I think. That's the only thing that matters. So even if people are telling him, like, you don't want no smoke from the end, leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? If if he gets into his emotions, you know what I mean? And I think he hits his lines in the morning, like 6 a.m. That's when he, That's when he's... <laughs> <laughs> That's where he gets skied up, so you know, it, it might come tomorrow morning. I don't know. <laughs> so it come in the morning, huh? <laughs> it might come in the morning or he might get he might get Kid Rock to come at him or he might be saving it. He got you know you, you know what my prediction is? So I mean, he might save it for the rally. Yeah, he Listen, no no no, this is my prediction. He'll wait till Eminem drop an album. And if his sales go down at all, then he'll come at M. Because he loves talking about ratings and sales oh, yeah. and he loves, all that. He's, so he's, if Eminem he's sales slide, everything is about figures. Numbers, yeah. So if Eminem sales slide, then he's coming yeah. after M. That's this guy needed, he needed, he needed <laughs> my name to sell records. Look at him. It's not going good. <laughs> disgusting. Horrible. Bad. Yeah. You know, he's slumping. You know, I think we should buy up stocks in Interscope and then get this guy fired. Yeah, so, you know, that, that's the type of politics and the games that he plays. You know what I'm saying? That he, he's probably saving this for a rally. You know what I mean? He's probably want to throw him. you know what I'm saying, to, to the red meat, red blood states. You know what I mean? And, and, if, and, Blue, Blue, if you could describe what's going on now, I mean... We, we witnessed Jamel Hill getting suspended. We see what's we going did. on with yeah. sports and, and Trump commenting on uh, the sports and the sp- sports world is in an uproar. We see what's going on in the entertainment field. Uh, if you could describe what's going on right now uh, in, in, with, with a movie reference or, or, or a book you read or a timeline in history, you know, a certain period in history, just any way possible – what would you describe what's going on right now? When you see a rapper beefing with a president, how would you describe this right now where somebody could say, yo, that's deep. I never thought about it that way. That's exactly, you know how people say when, when they see how messed up it is, they think of the movie with the shades with Roddy Roddy Piper. Like, how would oh, you they describe, live, yeah. yeah, they live. How would you describe in whatever way you can what's going on right now, Bloom? This time period we're living in, because it's just so interesting. Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now, okay. Yes. We are in a apocalyptic phase of this level of existence where something has to turn a corner or crash. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's no mm-hmm. longer. It's like you driving down the road with the muffler behind the shit is skidding and your rims is spinning, like not spinning, like the hubcap is coming off. 
You know what I mean? And the tires flooding, bloop, 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 bloop. you can't go much further with that whip. You either gonna mm. pull it over and change the tire and tie your muffler up, or it's gonna burst into flame. Mm. Excellent, you know excellent, excellent, excellent. So we you, are you, at that the, point <laughs> where all of the, the pressure points, uh-huh. all of the things, the Maria Antoinette feed and cake, that ain't working no more. Because feed and cake is entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Hollywood is in a slump, okay? Hollywood is on, and, and Hollywood is burning, literally, right? Because right outside of Hollywood, um, you know, wine country and all of that is burning up. Bruh, they said the equivalent of nine football fields are burning in three seconds. Wow. I didn't know now, that much. Napa Valley, okay? Yeah, I don't Napa know Valley, if every, yeah. anybody ever been up to Napa Valley, California. That's, You're talking that's, about beautiful land. That's that's where the wine they do the wine. At, that's right? wine country. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This is beautiful land up in California. Burnt to a crisp. You know what I'm saying? So the cum, the cumulative effects of all of the fires burning. This is not just one um, specific locale that they're saying. You know, uh, nine football fields. The cumulative effects because there's mad fires burning, son. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mad fires. Remember what I told you? It was on fire when I went on the last retreat. Vancouver, Washington, Oregon, and California was on fire. Okay? Mm-hmm. This shit is still burning. It's on fire. So Hollywood is burning. Literally and figuratively. Because Harvey Weinstein, the most powerful man in Hollywood, just went up in flames. So if it's a top-down effect, if he was abusing people at that level, if he, you know, because he got the whole hit list. He got all the top stars, females, you know what I'm saying? Now Angelina, Jolie, Jolie, Angelina yeah. Jolie. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So We're we going to say that the Harvey Weinstein, that's a whole, that we don't yeah, yeah, we, yeah, 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 yeah. We, 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 we're going to spill too much. I'm just saying, we're looking at the pressure points of entertainment because they said the um, the lulling effect of America La La Land, right, has always been entertainment. Marie Antoinette, feed him cake. It's always been in the form of entertainment. So this would be sports and entertainment. Shout out to Cam, right? So sports in an uproar in, in all areas. You know what I mean? I don't know. They playing baseball right now? I don't know what's going on in baseball. Yeah, but I know no the football idea. shit is, is, is totally fucked. You know, part of my more fan. Like, football is in, it's, it's in the quad mire. I don't see, there's a no-win situation. It's a stalemate at this point. You feel me? Mm-hmm. What, it's what? a stalemate because they're castrating <laughs> the melanated men on the, on the field. You know what I mean? It's either you should stand up and show that you got some nuts, or you going to, you know what I mean? Or you going to stand up and then there's, there's, you don't got a sack at all. You know, you're going to expose the fact that you don't have a sack, that you just run a pigskins. You know what I mean? What do you do in the off season if that's all you're living for? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They putting them in the catch-22. You want to on this team, you stand up and it's a wrap for you. You know what I mean? Who's willing to fall in the sport? Like, are there any men left? NBA, if y'all even stand up or refuse to stand up and, and pledge your allegiance, we got something for you. When everybody was trying to say, oh, Adam Silver, he's going to do his thing different. We know that he's, you know, you know, the NBA's fair and partial. Oh, really? Okay. Well, you're about to see them. You're about to see them Jews, you know, Show you they had what they working with. So, the sports ain't a level of that. That's not working anymore in regards to entertainment because people are tuning out. Like I said, Hollywood numbers is down. People ain't going to the movies like that. All of their blockbusters seem to be tanking. That's not holding people's attention. You feel me? When you look at other forms of entertainment, such as the hip hop awards show, you look at the Oscars, or you look at any—it's all politicized. So you can't go nowhere and not get politics. Politics has spilled over to everything. 
You feel me? Remember when we was talking the last time we did the interview on Jamel Hill, and it still it wasn't written in stone yet. I told you, there's no such thing as at this point of sports with no politics. Now it's clear. You know what I'm saying? Now it's clear. It's understood. It will never be. You can't go back at this particular point <laughs> because if you have to endure four years of this. Well, goddamn, like, it's going to be crazy. So, you know, what, what What do they have to lull the people back to sleep if sports and entertainment is no longer a go-to? Mm. So the old formula ain't working right now, huh? <laughs> it's so, you know, it's it's it's... It seems to be apocalyptic, you know, for the people online. I don't want to, don't get too scary. Let's just say in a, um, you know, a very loose, let's just use that term very loosely. You know what I'm saying? But they keep telling you about these catastrophes of biblical proportion. They keep invoking these concepts. You know what I'm saying? Where something ain't flooding, it's burning, or it's raining down fire in the form of bullets, you know? So, yeah, man, I got, it's, it's, I, it's, it's the level of chaos that um, I, I got, I got one, seen. I, got, I got one more question for you, Blue. I, I want to mm-hmm. uh, hit you with one more question before we wrap up the segment. It seems as though with within the melanated community, in the situation, let me just use this situation in particular as far as that, man. Um, and it, it just seems as though, like, if you like and appreciate Eminem's freestyle, you know, within the quote-unquote pro-black conscious woke community, if you like his freestyle, either you are you're a sellout and you're happy oh, that you got a white savior. That's number one. You're a sellout and you're happy you got yourself a white savior. Or if you don't like his freestyle, you're... I guess you're you could say you're a hater, you're bitter, and you know you you just can't you just can't see progress unless it comes in a specific form that you want. You really don't want mm-hmm. progress. You want w- the progress only to come in a form that you want. But if you progress want, comes want, in another form, you won't accept it. You so want to you really savage to do the freestyle. Yeah. 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 So you really don't want progress in the biggest sense. What do you think about those two ways of looking at it? Like, you know, it's either you're a sellout who wants a white savior or you're just a hater. How, how do we expand from just being lumped into those two categories, Blue Pill? You have to have conversations such as this, and these are the conversations that need to go viral where, you know, our logic is able to break people out of that myopic thought, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I saw some of those, um, videos floating around, and I understand both positions. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm, I'm never yeah. opposed to whatever the the polls are. You know what I'm saying? I get them. I understand those. But you know, when, when me and you have these conversations, they tend to exist somewhere in the middle to give people, you know, a better perspective of both arguments. So the um. 100% melanated argument is that, you know, we can't embrace this conversation because, once again, <laughs> letting in a European, a white boy, and if we do let him in, he's going to hijack the movement and control the narrative, and then next thing you know, you know, it's going to be, they ain't even focusing on Kaepernick no more, it's going to be Eminem taking the knee, and it's just, you know, my whole thing, once again, is, um, you know, he has a platform that is a little bit more extensive than ours. You know what I mean? And when I say ours, I mean melanated artists in particular. Because Jay-Z says something, <clears throat> that didn't really get that much press. That got swept from the at door. All. Yeah, yeah, at all. You know what I mean? And he said it during yeah. a time when the shots was being fired. It was heightened. T.I. Yeah, he- says something, they try to neutralize T.I. Are you a trap rapper, nigga? Sit down. You know what I'm saying? 
So when the people who say it that are not expected to say it say something, then they're quickly and constantly right. They try to um, activist shame them. Like, son, like, you were selling crack for 13 years. Or your catalog is about you shooting niggas. You know what I'm saying? You don't got nothing. So you won't even allow people to get to that place, right? And sometimes with artists, like, politics is different and outside or separate from their entertainment. They could talk about A, B, and C all day, but they're uh, taxpaying citizens who have traveled this world and seen different things. Like, their level of patriotism is somewhat different than ours because they're kind of, like, differently invested in this country you know, as artists that kind of represent not only their hood and this, you know what I'm saying, but some of them have taken it to, I represent this country, I love this country, I love my people, I love all people, I love this, I love that. You know, but when you see enough BS, then you're like, hold on. Like, oh, no, nah, these folks is coming at us. You know what I'm saying? We need to mount some form of attack and... For them, the way that they can do it is they have a platform. They can say something. They can either tweet something or they can get on wax and make the song. YG made the song. You know what I'm saying? He's not a political rapper. Nipsey's not necessarily a political rapper. But they made it in unison. They did that for Black and Brown Unity out in L.A. Before he came and, 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 and took a dump on a DACA or anything of that nature, they banded together in, in a show of unity to say, look, we need to get black and brown together and stop banging on one another because this is coming down a pipeline. And it wasn't even 100% certified whether he was going to be president. Remember, they was clapping at him when he was still a candidate. Okay? So people have gone on a limb and they have shown, like, look, I'm willing to break out of whatever my ideological prison is because I'm typecast as this type of artist, and I ain't supposed to be making this type of music, but I'm going to put on, you know what I'm saying, my P.E. Uh, cake for this one, and I'm going to go in. We don't really applaud those efforts, and we don't elevate those efforts enough. You know what I'm saying? We don't stand behind those songs. Don't Those don't really become our anthems. You know what I mean? And, and I mean, and, and truth be told, like, we don't really have political artists that we stand by, that we champion, that are that dudes. I see my son out there trying. Shout out to my son as well because his freestyle was fire. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shout, shout out my son. He um, blessed me. Yeah. He came on, on the platform before. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I had him on twice. You know, because right. Red interviewed him as well. So right. I see my son out there doing his numbers, you know what I'm saying, putting that conversation together. But outside of him, I see T.I. where he's going. You know what I mean? You know, and T.I. and Jay Morrison, you know, they, they politicized their their Twitter feed and their social media this weekend, and they shut down Houston out here in Atlanta, you know, for discrimination. That's a whole other story. I'm not going to get into particulars of that. But, again, these are people that are mobilizing and utilizing their standings in society, right, to to, to ride. You know what I'm saying? to have some sort of political activism, you know what I mean, enact it and show you how to do it in real time. But once again, we don't tend to appreciate these things enough. You know, anything that Eminem does is potentially going to become news. Okay? Because it's Eminem. Get over it. I got over it a long time ago. We need to get over that and let go of that. That's a conversation that they're having. So he took our conversation into their platform, into their populace, you know what I'm saying? And he's challenging them. That's what an artist is supposed to do. So, no, we, 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 we need to not be saying, yo, you know, you especially can't say that, oh, we can't talk about it. You're damn right we're going to talk about it. You're damn right we're going to put our perspectives on it. You're damn right we're going to give people a furthering narrative so they don't get lost in the fray of the convo. That's what we do. You know what I'm saying? But if somebody on their own accord wants to share it, or want, you know what I mean? A lot of people is closet Eminem fans. They closet Eminem is my best rapper. You're damn right. They out there. 
and they got on RBG. Trust that. Mm. I meet them. I know. You have enough conversations with people about hip hop and see that shit pop up, especially the people that were younger. You know, the millennials, they were a little bit more susceptible to that program and they didn't understand. They didn't get it. They don't come from the world that we come from. They didn't grow up off rock him. You know what I'm saying? So, and then, you know, there's, yeah, so there's the other extreme, you know what I mean, where people are openly embracing it, you know, because that's their hero, and he says something, and he's finally captured their attention, and, you know, because people are emotionally invested into artists. Why are we having, again, none of these conversations about people who are politically astute in our society that are not entertainers, whether they're uh, artistic entertainers or athletes, right? They're the only ones who we are having these conversations about. We are the leaders. (laughs) There are none. So the people are emotionally invested into celebrity. They care what these people think. They care what these people do. They're willing to follow these people. Okay? Who are the people who have the most followers on social media? Let's just take a look at this test. So, once again, you know what I mean? This is why these things tend to work in this society, in these times. This is why this is a talking point on all of the media. Okay? For someone like uh, Eminem, who's not even considered to be, um, you know, if you will, pardon me when I say this, but uh, socially relevant. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When's the last Eminem album that he put out that went five, six, seven, eight, ten times platinum? You know what I mean? Name me an Eminem single since 2009. It registered. There was anthemic. You know what I mean? Like that that dude, he's he's come and gone. You know what I'm saying? You know, we're looking at the grandfather Eminem. You know what I'm saying? It's a different dude with a different face. I think he's clone. Like I was like, who is this thing? So you got the beard, the beard Eminem, the beard. Yeah, the, the, the bearded Eminem, you know what I'm saying? The, the beard Eminem. The nigga that be, yeah, like, he got have millions of dollars, he still gonna look like this nigga sits on his couch with his hand in his crouch, you know what I'm saying, with a beer open and shit, screaming at the TV, you know what I mean? With some backup pills somewhere in the crib, just in case. You know, that's who we talking about right now. But he has made an impact enough on the game, and he has enough of a dedicated rabbit fan base that, yes, I think that any extra spoon stirring the pot, okay, is um, is, is, is dope, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's more inclusive to the conversation, right? Dudes ain't talking about Puerto Rico. You know what I mean? Dudes ain't putting one and two together like that to keep this conversation in the fourth. Shout out to Fat Joe and Jay-Z and Title and all of the ones that definitely are, you know, not only talking about Puerto Rico. Shout out to um, Pitbull. You know what I'm saying? Not only talking about Puerto Rico, but are doing something about it. But I'm saying like a unilateral effort, right? All artists need to stop at this particular point and pick up some form of politics. You gotta have some kind of talking points. This is a political conversation that the entire country, if not the world, is having at this point. You know what I'm saying? And everybody needs to throw their hat in at some point to let their constituents know, right? Because we're talking about artists now, like they're politicians. They're constituents, okay? Because even Eminem, where I told you a while ago, I said, we vote with our dollars for artists. We cast votes, right? 
when we buy these CDs. It's almost tantamount to voting for them because we're pushing them to these particular slots, these invisible slots that, that exist. Oh, this is the number one artist in the country. What does that mean? You know what I'm saying? This is the king of New York. This is the best rapper alive. This is our top five. You know what I'm saying? And you cast that vote. You know, now it's downloads. Now it's not just purchasing CDs. But he made a distinction, draw the line in the sand. You either riding with me or you riding with him. But are you a politician? Talking like one. You know, but is Trump a politician or was he? Prior to that, nigga was a celebrity. So it's a very thin line that we're looking at. You know what I'm saying? Let's be ahead of the curve. Let's be ahead of this conversation. And now on the sidelines, always scratching our heads, trying to figure out what the hell is going on every time that we see these headlines. You dig? Indeed, indeed. Leave your contact info, Blue, so they can get at you Man, for information. Blue Pillow 44, P-I-L-L-A-R 44. That's on IG. Um, my Gmail is Blue Pillow 44 at Gmail. You can holler at me, you know what I'm saying, if you have any inquiries, if you want to continue this conversation in the most purest form, if you have anything to add on to it, you know. And, uh, yeah, like, I, 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 I look forward to, uh, you know, it's, it's some interesting things on the horizon. Me, you know, man. This music I, I, it, it should be coming out. I, I, you know, what, you, I, what, what I, yeah. not to cut you, but what I do see in this 44-year anniversary of hip-hop, man, is, you know, not only a, a larger percentage of artists becoming politicized, I see a lot of my heroes who were sitting down for a moment because they were, you know, overage artists, if you will, you know what I mean? And I, I mean, I don't really want to use that term, but I'm just painting that picture like, oh, this dude has already progressed into his next career and they're acting now or they're on sitcoms or they're doing this and that. I think everybody's going to pick the microphone up. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've seen a, a crazy freestyle by Black Thought and Met the Man on Sway. You know what I mean? Like, um, I just came from a Nas concert the other day. You know, he was 40, 44 as well. Doing his thing, like turning new pages as artists, still growing and progressing as artists. Uh, the whole uh, boot camp clip was on the bill. You know, AZ got new music out. Kooji Rap got new music out. You know, um, I'm on my uh, on my Instagram. I'm seeing all of these '90s uh, concert reunions that are going around. You know, different countries and everything. Like people is on the stage and they performing again. And hopefully, this will lead to them making more music. You know, what I'm saying and getting back in the booth. You know, we, we, we're we at that place. We, we need to have a, a grown-up conversation in this country. You know what I'm saying? And we need to have it artistically more than anything. And who better to, to bring that conversation to the forefront but seasoned vets? You know what I mean? And you already got your young gunners out there. You got your Kendrick shooting. You got Cole shooting. You know what I'm saying? You got other artists of that ilk that, you know, they're not disillusioned about what's going on. Like, Ross is shooting, and, 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 you know, there's other people that are loading up the silos, and they're ready to go, and we're going to need more of that. We constantly need this conversation to be at the forefront because the shit can slip very quick, you know what I'm saying, That's to a place where people can't get it back, you know? Because, um, yeah, you're dealing with a madman. Indeed, man. It's interesting. This conversation just ended at 44 minutes and 40 seconds. <laughs> we oh, yeah, didn't let's, plan, let's cut that we, then. We, we, we didn't plan this, but when I just said that, Blue Pill stopped talking at 44 minutes and 40 seconds. I'm looking at my phone right now. The 44K Brother Rich Underground Railroad, No The Ledge. Uh, make sure you download yeah. that app, No yeah. The Ledge. Uh, no The Ledge app. app. Know the ledge. All right, go to Patreon, support my brother, support uh, Black Magic 363, the most single, most important form of media on the planet right now. Please make no mistake about it. 
Peace, love, and light. Peace, family. We see you next time. Peace. Greetings. I am Shree Master Gano Grills for the Underground Railroad Black Magic. It's very important that you don't take the laws of reciprocity lightly. I would like for all of you to donate what you can. Donate $20. Donate $100. Make it count. Make it hurt. Because if you watched at least five videos and you have derived some sense of eloquence or some kind of benefit into your life, it's important that you restorate and you pay in and you support this channel. I know I do. And I want Brother Rich to continue to do the great work that he's doing. And it's important for all of us to come in and submit and help out the cause.